SOC 2 is the gold standard for information security compliance. But did you know there's actually two kinds of SOC 2 reports? And even if you did know that, do you know what they do? How they're different? Which one you need? Over the course of this video, we're going to discuss SOC 2 Type 1 and SOC 2 Type 2. How they're same, how they're different, and which one is best for your organization. SOC 2 stands for System and Organization Controls and is a voluntary compliance framework. It was set up by the AICPA, also known as the American Institute of CPAs. SOC 2 is based on five trust service criteria. Security, availability, confidentiality, processing integrity, and privacy. These trust service criteria are further divided into what's known as controls. Controls are nothing but processes and policies you put together to prevent any security oversight and to catch any data lapses. The overall aim of any software report is to communicate to your stakeholders that you take data security very seriously. That being said, it is a fully optional framework. There's no mandate that says you have to get a software report. And finally, SOC2 is ideal for SaaS companies that primarily operate in the North American region. With the basics covered, let's head into some details. When choosing to get SOC2 compliant, you will have two choices, a SOC2 type one report and a SOC2 type two report. So what is a SOC2 type one report? A SOC2 type one report details your organization's system design of internal controls. It's an assessment of your compliance posture at a point in time with sufficient proof to demonstrate how functional these controls are. SOC 2 controls can be preventive, detective, or corrective. Now, that's the kind of answer that an auditor or maybe Google likes, but that's not the kind of answer that works for everybody else. So let's give it another shot. When you're getting compliant, a company wants to know two things. One, that you have the right data security processes in place, and two, that you're following these processes that you have set up. Think of it as a burrito. Step one is having all the right ingredients in place, but step two is the ability to pull it all together to actually make the burrito. A SOC 2 type one report involves an auditor coming in and seeing whether you have the right controls in place, or in this case, the ingredients. So what are the advantages of a SOC 2 type one report? For external stakeholders, it shows that you're committed to data security and that you're on your way to becoming SOC 2 compliant. For you, it'll include a ringside view into the organizational controls that you need to become SOC 2 type two compliant. And it'll give you a practical understanding of the things that the auditors are searching for when it comes time for that type two report. So how do you get a SOC 2 type one report? There's three steps to getting a SOC 2 type 1 report. One, implementation, which involves outlining which trust criteria and controls you want to implement. Two, readiness assessments, during which you'll review all documents and processes and work to fix any gaps. Three, selecting an auditor and getting certified, where you'll submit all the controls you've collected for review by an external party. There's links in the description if you want a more detailed insight, but that's what you need to know about a SOC 2 type 1 report. Now, what is a SOC 2 type 2 report? A SOC 2 type 2 is functionally very similar to a type 1. It's a detail of your organization's system design of internal controls to meet the requirements of the applicable trust principles. Except instead of being a point in time picture, it's a continuous assessment. It typically occurs over three to 12 months. A SOC 2 type 2 report involves an auditor taking all the controls that you've set in place and then seeing whether you're following them. Let's take an example. Say you have an employee onboarding process set in place. You know you want them to have a work email ID, you want them to have access to like internal tools and softwares for them to go through a background verification check and for them to go through your company security policy documents. These are the things you will set up over the course of your SOC 2 type 1 report. And during your SOC 2 type 2 report, your auditor will see whether you actually follow these processes you set in place when you bring new employees on board. So what are the advantages of a SOC 2 type 2 report? One, better security. A successful SOC 2 attestation report means that you're using best-in-class policies and processes in order to secure your customer data, which in and of itself has several long-tail benefits for your business. Two, a shorter sales cycle. Because you have a SOC 2 type 2 report, you'll often get to skip past some of the long and arduous security questionnaires that come up during the sales process, meaning that you'll be able to close sales deals much quicker. A SOC 2 type 2 report means that you have the added benefit of being able to win over deals from your non-compliant peers, giving you an extra competitive sales edge. How do you get a SOC 2 type 2 report? The process of getting a SOC 2 type 2 report is very similar to getting a type 1. It's even better if you've actually gotten that type 1 report beforehand. There's implementation, readiness assessment, and auditor selection, followed by the audit itself. Now, a type 2 report does take a longer amount of observation, but that's on the auditor to do. So, what are the differences between a SOC 2 type 1 and a SOC 2 type 2? The first important difference is scope. While a SOC 2 type 1 report is a point in time assessment, the SOC 2 type 2 report is a far more in-depth and continuous monitoring of your controls. Two, the amount of time taken. 
because the SOC2 type 2 report has a longer observation period, it takes longer than a SOC2 type 1 report, often between 3 to 12 months, depending on your observation timeline. And finally, cost. Cost is the last major difference between a type 1 and a type 2. While a type 1 report can cost anywhere between $8,000 to $30,000, a SOC 2 report will typically range from anywhere between $20,000 to $50,000. Now, if that seems quite steep, don't worry. There are several ways to reduce the cost and the time required to get a SOC 2 type 1 and a SOC 2 type 2 report. One of the best ways to do it is by using compliance automation. By using compliance automation, you can reduce the amount of manual effort you put into the compliance process, meaning that you can get your SOC 2 type 1 and your SOC 2 type 2 reports far more quickly and far more affordably. By using compliance automation, you reduce the amount of manual effort required to get compliant, meaning you can get your type 1 and type 2 reports at much better prices and at significantly quicker timelines. How much better? By using compliance automation software like Splinter, companies just like yours have gotten their SOC 2 Type 1 and SOC 2 Type 2 reports in as little as 4-6 to six weeks and for as little as $10,000. And if you're an early stage startup, you can apply for the Splinter Ignite program and get even better deals on your SOC 2 Type 1 and Type 2 reports.